Hello, everybody. This is Chris Attig with the Veterans Law Blog. If you've been uh, sitting in here, you've been uh, watching. God only knows what was going on here. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical glitch getting started, um, so you got to see a little bit of uh, background here in San Antonio, Texas. I am at the uh, conference for the National Organization of Veterans Advocates. So, um, about 400 attorneys get together twice a year, uh, and we teach each other everything we've learned about veterans law, so that everybody stays current. Uh, today, I have an opportunity. Uh, to meet uh, and introduce you to Patrick Clifford, who is a vocational uh, expert. And I'll tell you about that in just a second. We're also going to have some other uh, interviews throughout the week here. So we're going to have an opportunity to meet with a BVA judge uh, and a couple of other attorneys that practice in real unique uh, areas of veterans law, including uh, somebody who many of you know, Ben Krause, uh, is going to come talk to us about uh, vocational rehab claims. So stay tuned to the Facebook page of the Veterans Law Blog for the Times um, usually get you about 15, 20 minutes heads up because uh, we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants on the schedule here. So this video will be available live, um, obviously, while we're talking. And then uh, afterwards, it'll be recorded and posted on the Facebook page where we'll keep it up. Um, for premium members of the Veterans Law Blog, you'll be able to see this when you log into your uh, member account. You'll see the recorded video on your account dashboard. So um, in any event, I want to introduce you to Patrick Clifford. He is a vocational expert, um, and I'm going to let him talk to you about what that is. Uh, but I have worked with Patrick on a, a couple of our cases. Uh, he's come in and he's looked at uh, veterans who, because of their service-connected disability, were unable to engage in substantially gainful activity uh, or, or get work, essentially. And he's helped us prove that to the VA so that that veteran can collect TDIU. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to get into it, and I'm going to ask Patrick... Uh, would you tell everybody why you think a, uh, a vocational evaluation is important in a TDIU claim? Well, a vocational evaluation is oftentimes considered evidence of disability by the judges. So if you're suffering from service-connected disabilities, which limit your ability to hold down competitive employment, then it's important to have a certified vocational evaluator perform the evaluation, write up the disability uh, opinion, and then submit that for you when you uh, file your claim. What got you into this kind of work? Uh, you're quite good at what you do. Um, how did you come across and, and start getting into doing vocational evaluations for veterans? The first one I did was probably about 15 years ago. It was a neighbor of mine, and it was a veteran that was having difficulty with his claim, and he asked me to help, and I sort of stepped into the role of uh, advocate, and that's how I started doing it. How do you, when a veteran... Uh, or their attorney, or a VSO, whoever it is, approaches you and says, Patrick, we've got this TDIU case, uh, and we need to prove um, that there's a, a medical impact on the ability to work. How do you approach that case as a vocational uh, evaluator? Well, I ask whoever is presenting to uh, get some information together for me. If they have the rating decision and maybe some of the uh, examinations, where the examiner is talking about the limitations and symptoms associated with a service-connected disability, I can often start a report, a very good report, with just that. Then if I can get the uh, education and past work history, I can complete the report. Do you have particular records that you like um, somebody to bring to you? So when they come to you and want you to look at the case, do you want to see a C file? What do you want to see to, to do the best job? I typically see the entire C file. I like to say I've reviewed the entire thing. But most importantly is are the examinations that uh, are specific to your disability. If I can get my hands on those, that provides me a lot of information. If you also have a social security disability determination, that could be helpful. Um, and then any private physicians that you may have had examinations performed by. Do you find when you're comparing Social Security disability evaluations to what the VA is looking for. Do you find similarity in what the two agencies look for, or is there a big difference? Or? There's a bit of a difference, but there are some similarities as well. But there is a difference. So when you're developing a veteran's uh, case, you need to use different language, and you have to look at specific things a little bit differently than a Social Security disability file. One of the things I see a lot, I look at a lot of cases as they come out of the board, uh, come out of the courts, and one of the things I see a lot is that uh, the examiner, the raider, the, the board judge sees a, a, a obviously disabled veteran that, that has a lot of difficulties, can't uh, 
rotate at the hips, can't stand for more than 20 minutes, can't lift more than five pounds. Um, but for whatever reason, the examiner or the radar comes back or the VA's, um, the doc that's on their payroll, comes back and says, uh, well, this guy may be really bad shape physically, but he can do sedentary work. And they deny the TDIU. Do, do you see that issue a lot in terms of what vets bring to you? I see the issue probably 85% of all cases that I work. And it's a total disconnect for that examiner to go through and list all the physical limitations and then just indicate that the person's capable of sedentary work. So would you look at those same records in making the determination that they're, they're, they're not able to do? What is sedentary work for those that don't know? Yes, um, sedentary work is basically work that you can perform seated for most of the day. Um, it doesn't require physical activity, but it does require cognitive activity. So... But going beyond that, sedentary work requires the same type of work ethic or predictability and pace and production that's required at all levels of work. So if you're incapable of showing up for work on a regular, consistent basis, getting along with your coworkers in a predictable manner, uh, or if you're experiencing excessive absenteeism, that will interfere with your ability to perform sedentary work. And I think that's probably one of the key elements that the medical examiners are overlooking. And that's big because when you look at conditions like PTSD or traumatic brain injuries, some of the issues that we see a lot in terms of manifestation of symptoms are things like uh, uh, impulse control um, right, yep. or impaired relationships with family, coworkers, colleagues. So basically, even if you could sit and do the job, whatever it is, for 10 hours a day, you may not necessarily be able to get to the job, or you may not be able to function in other aspects of the workplace that makes that job unavailable to you. Is that essentially it? Correct. You may be able to get the job, you may be able to show up for a week or two consistently, but after a period of time, you may experience difficulties, and that will prevent you from performing even at the sedentary level. I know you've worked, uh, full disclosure, uh, Patrick has worked as a vocational evaluator in some of my cases on, with my law firm. Um, do you do you only work with attorneys, or do you work with vets directly? Or I work with both attorneys and veterans directly, and I perform my work the same way with both groups. So, if a veteran that's watching this is having difficulty convincing the VA that their medical condition, their symptoms, their limitations are inhibiting their ability to get substantially gainful employment, you would be possibly able to do that kind of case with them without them having an attorney. Yes, I would love to do those type of cases. And all I really need is to reach for you to reach out uh, through my website, contact me. And once we start chatting uh, via email, I'll, I'll ask you to get a hold of your rating decision and some of your uh, CMP exams. And you can provide me with some of your uh, work history and education right over the email. I can generate a report, email that to you, signed electronically, and you're good to go. Do you get feedback from the VA on your reports, or, or how do you hear back to, to evaluate whether your reports are effective? The only feedback I get are from the people I perform the reports for, and when they win their case, they usually will tell me, you know, thank me for my efforts. Now, there's um, a lot of veterans uh, that follow the Veterans Law Blog that like doing cases on their own. Um, you know, Within the veterans community, we have a lot of uh, very independent people. Um, we're, we're taught from day one in the military, if you do it, do it yourself, if you're with a team, but do the best you can on your own. And we've got vets like that, uh, that follow the blog. If there's a veteran out there that doesn't want to work with a vocational evaluator, doesn't want to work with an attorney or a VSO, which is totally fine, they can do that. Uh, and often vets are successful doing that. What would you say is the most important thing or the most overlooked thing for a veteran handling their own TDIU? If they're going to do it on their own, I would suggest take a look at the CMP examinations and see what the examiner is discussing in regards to your disability. There'll usually be a list of symptoms and there'll be um, a list talking about the functional impact of those symptoms on your ability to work. And there'll be statements talking about uh, your limitations. But often at the end of that examination, the examiner just will blanketly say, that all these limitations and uh, difficulties you're having does not affect your employability. Now that's a contradiction, and that's a contradiction that you can overcome.
Patrick, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to sit with us today. I know you've got a lot of folks here to talk to at the conference the next couple of days. Uh, you can reach out to uh, Patrick on his website. If you're watching this um, on the Veterans Law Blog as a member, you'll see uh, we'll put up his website link. I will also make sure that it appears in the very first comment below this. Uh, but your website again and, and contact information for the folks is? Uh, my name is Patrick Clifford. It's CliffordVocationalServices.com. All the information's right there. Great. Patrick, thank you for coming on board, and I uh, hope you get to meet some of the uh, fantastic vets that follow the Veterans Law Blog. Well, thank you.